We're going to pick it up now and talk about uh, the uh, Module 9 content, which is based on the OB Chapter 8, which says Motivation, Cognitive and Behavioral Theories and Techniques. And I'm going to give you uh, slide handouts just so that you have some uh, pieces of paper to look at and you can make notes on them and so on. And I'm doing it this way deliberately because this particular chapter is, is highly structured and sequential in the way it develops the material. We will then, we'll take, we'll, we will then uh, after we do that, we'll take a look at about a five or six minute segment from the Michelle Pfeiffer film, Dangerous Minds, 1995, which has an excellent sequence in it, I believe. We'll see how you feel about it and, and uh, react to it. Uh, then we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll continue on with the second part of things which focuses on the behavioral approaches to motivation and I introduced that to you last Thursday with some observations on dog training and would like to return to that especially for those of you who weren't here last Thursday to take a look at whatever experiences you have had with animal training. So first let me come up and give you there is a whole bunch of cables under this floor, so a, ta a uh, desk, if I fall flat on my face, it's because they're dangerous. Okay. And on the far right, I'll come around and bring them over to you in a moment. These slides are in the course, and for the remote sites, I sent them uh, up to you by email. Let me, yeah, let me come in here. And if you look at the full set that's in the course, you'll see that this is only a partial uh, piece of what's in there because I want to focus on some specific topics. Great, thank you. Here, no, I'll step over here. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll fall down. <laughs> See, did she, she didn't get a copy, did she? No. Also for the remote sites, the uh, few items for the film scenes came in uh, uh, by courier. As you know, some of you sent them to me, <coughs> and I did not see them till, until today. I have reviewed them, and I have updated the gradebook, and I have put them in the courier package to come out to the different sites. Okay. <laughs> and incidentally, if I cough, there, whatever is in the air is driving me totally nuts. And normally I don't have any reaction in April. But there's got to be some really good stuff out there that's causing my throat to <laughs> get irritated and so on. Now, for all the sites, as I said, I uh, sent this stuff to you by email. But if you have a laptop, you can access the Module 9 section of the course and take a look at the slides. And these start at about slide five or six. It'll be rather obvious. It's the first introduction slide that's, that is in there. Now first, let's get a grip on what we mean by these two observations, cognitive theories and behavioral theory. Notice that it's plural for the cognitive and singular for the behavioral. There are two, or actually there's three, cognitive theories, and two of them are strongly cognitive, whereas the other one is sort of a blend. First one is called expectancy theory. And this one is a somewhat complex, and I'm going to take our time slowly to go through it and carry us through all the parts of expectancy theory. It's highly structured, especially the way I chose to write it, so that it's a top-down, hopefully top-down logic 
that you can grasp basically the first time around. It focuses on internal processes of choice. Notice my use of the words. Internal processes, meaning we cannot see these processes, but after we get into this, I think most of you will agree that you've been there and have had the experience. And it is all focused on the choices that humans have to make among different courses of action when they're faced with more than one option. Equity theory is looking at the processes of fairness and unfairness. Would one of you come on down and get the handouts, please? Equity is the formal term, but it simply means whether a set of results is fair or unfair as perceived by an individual. And as students, you experience this in my view, all the time when you get either a test back or a quiz, especially if it's uh, not an objective test, it's one that the, the professor had to assess or a graduate assistant assessed. And you may or may not say anything, but your behavior can show a lot about whether you feel fairly treated by the process that you experience. This is phenomenally powerful stuff. <coughs> And I put the amount of time and emphasis on it deliberately because it's part of our lives. And, it, and those of us who have any responsibility for managing other people in an organization, the, uh, if we go outside of fairness, if we go in an unfair direction, it can have powerful negative consequences for the system. Then goal setting theory, halfway between, so to speak, between purely cognitive and behavioral theory, focuses on setting goals for people in such a way that they're motivated to perform to the goals. This one is well understood and well documented in the research literature, suggesting that it has quite a bit of validity to it. The last one in the last section, which we will likely treat as the second half of today, is called behavioral, behavioral theory. And you possibly have seen this and by the name or label operant conditioning and behavior modification. I've chosen to refer to it as behavior modification uh, because that seems to say it. Both are accurate. It depends on whether you want to use a more technical term uh, than is otherwise needed. So let's take a look at the assumptions that are underlying expectancy theory. We need to deal with these straight on because if you and I or I cannot accept the assumptions, then we have a problem with the theory. You can come on down and get the handout, please. And there are four assumptions underlying expectancy theory. Forces in the environment around a person plus characteristics of the person affect, interact with each other, and affect the person's behavior. People are faced with choices, and they are asked to, we are asked to choose among different courses of action. Might be two, three, four, twenty. Don't know. But when we are faced with a choice, then we use consciously or unconsciously an internal process that allows us to make a choice. And then, people make choices based on preferences for outcomes or actions. We're going to put some formal labels on this and manipulate the variables, as they are called, and the factors of the theory to understand motivational processes. But preferences becomes an important part of this, and I'm going to test it with you in a moment. And there are, for the behavior enacted, some result or outcome, and we have preferences among those choices. In the last item, choices are rational based on perceived value of outcomes of actions. Quickly, one would think about what will I get from the, cho from the choice and the action, and what is the, the value that I place on that. Now, with just those assumptions on the table, <coughs> 
let me construct a couple of choices. And let's see what you would do about these choices. Did I not tell you about Earth, Texas? I think I did, right? OK. I'm totally enthralled with Earth, Texas. It's just a cool place. So what I'm going to offer is to any of you who would like to go to Earth, Texas, I will pay for the trip. And you can go to Earth, Texas. You're going to have to come back right away because there's no hotel. Does this appeal to any of you? I see a couple of no's. You, it appeals to you. Well, I'm not a bit surprised that it does because of something you said last week. You may, may, I think we were just talking privately uh, because I don't remember what you said in class, but you, you like variety. You like different people. Am I correct on this? Oh, yeah. So you would really want to go to Earth, Texas? I like road trips. Pardon? I like road trips. You like road trips. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we have one out of maybe 20 people. Now let me take it one step further. And I want you to play along with this. And by the way, I can't pay for any of it. So uh, just pretend a little bit. Now I can offer you a paid for trip with a hotel stay in Midland, Texas. You going to pick up on that one? And you, Odessa is right next door, so if you have a car, you can just go to Odessa, where in Midland, Odessa is the area where uh, the, the football film came from. Um, what was the name of it? Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights. Yes, I haven't watched it yet. I have it. But so I don't see too many people who want to go to Midland, Texas. How about Boston, Massachusetts? You smile, sir. Have you ever been to Boston? Are you from that area? <coughs> no. But you have visited Boston? Yes. Nobody else would like a trip to, you would like a trip to Boston? You would like a trip to Boston? All the top row up there, well lighted, wants a trip to Boston over here? Why? Never been there. Never been there. Have you ever been to Midland, Texas? Fortunately. Fortunately not? Oh. I don't know. I have. And it's, that's a perception, incidentally. Over here, you would like to go to Boston, these two? Sure. Have you ever visited Boston? Uh, just the airport. Just the airport. That doesn't count. Sorry. Uh, why do you want to go to Boston? Oh, the art museums? Oh, it's a lot of museums. Sports. The ports? Sports. 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 You a Boston Red Sox fan? No. <laughs> Be careful when if you go, because they are rabid. The oh, the Celtics. Yeah, that's okay. But they're rabid about the Red Sox. I think you have gone to Boston before, haven't you? Never been there. All right. Now that was. Did you notice that there was an increase in the number of people who were motivated to go to Boston, at my expense? Now let's take it to another level of activity and allow me to propose that I'll afford a seven-day trip to Hawaii. She was real fast, real fast. Been there before? Been there? Pardon? You want to live in Hawaii? Gas is... Yeah, and almost within walking distance of each other. Uh, temperature doesn't change. It's on the equator. It stays about 80 degrees pretty much all year round. Um, now, what I've done with you, and you'll see this in greater detail in a moment, people choose among different courses of action based on preferences. I didn't expect more than, say, one person to pick Earth, Texas. I know Earth, Texas, just having passed through. And I wouldn't object to going there just to see a little bit more of it, because it was a quick drive through uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, so you don't see much of anything. So let's see how this plays out with uh, some more detail about the concepts that are within expectancy theory. Now, all